Hey guys, it's JP California coming at you guys. Well, beautiful, sunny, Southern California day. Not necessarily warm, kind of a cooler day, but it is sunny Southern California nonetheless. I, JP California, and coming at you guys to go over the good, the bad, and the ugly on Aston Villa's Boxing Day. And before we get into it, please like and subscribe. Give us all the love. Give us those comments. Give us those likes. All that stuff. It takes, oh, three seconds of your time to just give a like. It takes 20 seconds to comment. It takes you one second to follow. So please get after us. We are trying to grow the channel. And if you like the content, then maybe you should follow us. Even if you mute us, it's okay. Um... On the flip side, the things that are not okay was that Boxing Day game by Aston Villa. And, and for us here at the North End YouTube channel, it is a derby match. Because there is, strangely enough, two Villa fans on this YouTube channel. There's two Man U fans. Like, there's always more Man U fans everywhere else. Tell all the Man United fans they are absolute shit. They're absolute shit. Can't wait for Villa to play Man U at home. But there's always more United fans who have crap to say. There's always more Chelsea fans. There's always more Tottenham fans and and Arsenal fans and Liverpool fans, but there's not there's not two Villa fans usually. Um, and so to have two on this channel is special. So it was the Derby Day for us. It was Boxing Day for the rest of the world. I got up. It was not the 7 a.m. game, which was great. It was the noon game here on the West Coast. So I went to the pub, met up with all my friends, all my soccer friends, and, and watched the match. And, well, let's get into it. Aston Villa is good, bad, and ugly against Man U. Villa lose 3-2 from a classic United comeback. Here we go. Number one, the good. The good in the good, the bad, and the ugly for Aston Villa viewpoint is the set plays. The set plays were mwah, chef kiss. They were great. Um, whether it was the corner goal, I believe that was the second goal, where the ball floated beyond the goal, then Donker gets backside, heads it back across, and someone pokes it in. Just just a well-worked goal, right? Purposefully floating it over the goal so a guy could head it back across, creating a lot of havoc, and having guys run a little late into the box to finish their opportunities. Great stuff. The set-piece play was obviously something worked on, why does Leon Bailey get 15 yards offsides talking, chirping in Onana's ear just to right before the kick walk away? Takes himself out of the play. Has nothing to do once the ball is kicked. Nothing. Great, great play. That ball looks, looks like it skims off uh, Ole Watkins, but the goal is ultimately given to John McGinn on a classic cross in that just skips by everybody and finds its way into the back post great set pieces our set piece coach has been earning his money this year and and it's one thing that villa fans do talk about quite a bit was that we got a set piece coach last year during the steven gerrard era um he was brought in uh by the club not by steven gerrard um he's well liked um his name is eluding me right now um, and he's been doing well on the returns for our goals on set pieces this year. So, you know what? More to that. Let's get into the bad. The bad was second half performances. Second half performances were poor. Um, the subs were poor. The timing of the subs were poor. After the first goal, Aston Villa should have subbed four guys and two subs. Right, we should have taken off Dan Donker, who I thought played okay. He's he's just okay to me. Um, we should have taken off um, Ramsey, who clearly isn't up to the pace yet, and we keep playing him. And, and while I understand he's coming back from injury and he needs 
he needs time on the field. Maybe when you're winning 2-1 at United, your your moment should not be to give him time. Maybe it should be to get the three points. Um, taking him off and putting on Diaby, putting uh, Leon Bailey as, as an outside mid instead of a forward, probably would have gone and done a lot of help for us. Um, bringing back Pal Torres in, in the second half to get a few minutes. He was on the bench, um, and I think using him early in the second half could have been beneficial. Um, bringing in a player like Tim Irabunum, I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. I thought he did fine. Um, but that we just seem a little dry. We just seemed a little beyond the pace, and our subs were clearly behind. Luca Dean went off injured for Moreno. That's pretty standard. Matt Cash couldn't play because I would have rather seen Cons in the middle. And this is showing that we're, we're a little thin. So for me, that second half was just just pitiful. You know, you need to, if you score two goals in a game in the first half to be up 2-0, you should at least get a point. To lose was typical. To lose was typical. And this brings me into the ugly, in the good, the bad, and the ugly. Typical Villa. That was typical Villa. Being 2-0 up at Old Trafford and losing the game. That's typical Villa. Having two games that we think we can get some easy points. Um, especially off Sheffield United. Jesus, they were bad. Um, playing Sheffield United at home and going to United, you know, four weeks ago we would say, yeah, that should be four to six points. We have one point for, to show for those two matches. That's typical Villa. Um, all the things that we haven't seen in a long time, months actually, of, of just like the typical old villa where things start looking up and we start, fans start kind of guessing and, and thinking ahead. It just, it's gone back to typical villa. And I don't like that because the villa of old sucked. They're boring. They're the ones who made me come up with the drinking game that every time villa score, you take a shot. And if it's from a corner, it's two shots. We still do that drinking game. So this drink this weekend, I took three shots just because Villa scored two goals. That that time era that made me come up with that that that's how that game reminded me. Um, it's been really rough. It's been really rough. So the game against United hurt because I thought we had turned a corner. I thought we were trying to be a, a top four team, and top four teams don't let two goal leads slip. Maybe we aren't there yet. Maybe we're uh, maybe we are just a top five, a five, six, seven team. But I would like to see some changes in January happen. Maybe sell a few guys, bring in two guys. Um, I'm not doom and gloom. I don't think the manager's crap. I don't. I don't think there needs to be wholesale changes. But there do need to be a, be a few changes for that because I just felt like we we missed a golden opportunity there to really cement our top three status. And we blew it. And and not just yesterday, but over two games. So, guys, JP California, a little down, a little somber. I'm not super unhappy because Man U is always a hard place to go at Old Trafford. But, like, this Man U is especially not great. So, to not get points is rough. To not get points in the last two matches is rough. Um, and if we don't get points against Burnley at home, I will be a little worried. Uh, this is JP California. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. Hope I added to your commute to work or whatever it is that you do while you watch this. Um, but guys, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year that's coming. See all you guys again soon. Peace. This is the North